You haven't even gotten to anything. Have you heard about uh, Gino this week? No, I have not. All right, ladies and I gentlemen. Did see, I did see that he praised you somewhere. Yeah, we got a lot of... Uh, would you like to do some quick Gino coverage with me here? Gino Biscante? Fuck yeah. Here we go. Gino is... Flat broke. Gino ain't got no money. Flat broke. He's always looking so damn crummy. Flat broke Gino. Ain't nobody think he's funny. <laughs> he can't move out of the projects because Gino is flat broke. Shout outs and welcome to the Gino segment of the week here. They wrote a sound at me! He's an obnoxious loudmouth hobo. And he actually, listen to this, Gino is actually homeless. We found this out. He let us slip. This is no joke. He is no way. 100% homeless here. Uh, so here's an interesting thread on the Bring Back group. This guy named Mike LaBella. Shout outs to Mike LaBella bringing this to our attention. I don't really watch Compound anymore, for reals. I, mean, I don't watch actually. it anymore. I watch stuff like uh, Keemstar and cool <laughs> fucking Wolves videos. He says this. He goes, on Monday's show, Dave Lando opened the show saying he's moving to Harlem. Is he moving in with Discante? Is he the new roommate? Now, a lot of interesting things going on right here. Dave Lando, let's talk about him first. He announces he's moving to Harlem, New York City. Now, even yeah. you out there in the Netherlands, you've heard Harlem. Yes, it's a very bad place. Uh, <laughs> it's the worst place you could live, East Harlem. I mean, we remember when we brought up Gino's apartment on Google Maps, it's across the street from a housing project. Not yeah. across a highway. Like right there in his front porch is Every a housing Every Google project. image is a crime scene picture. Exactly. A chain link fence, rats in the, the <laughs> vestibules. Yes. It's a dump. Chalk outlines. So Dave Landau, let's talk about him first. Dave Landau announces he's moving to Harlem. Now, we've always wondered, uh, Dave Landau uh, lives in Novi, Michigan, a suburb outside of the Detroit land area in Michigan. He's got a wife, remember? A smoking hot wife. Oh, she's so hot. She's fucking hot, bro. <laughs> He's got a kid. Now, I don't know how old this kid of his is, but he goes to a nice, safe public school in Novi, Michigan. So Dave Landau gets hired as co-host for the Anthony Cumia Hour, this twisted show on this twisted compound. Now... <laughs> We go, how is Dave Landau going to get to the show? He lives in Michigan. His kids have friends there. His wife has a life there. She has a job there. What is he going to do? Well, for a bit, he was flying every day no to shit. New York City from Michigan using his miles that he Oof. earned up during one of his bullshit jobs or whatever. Fuck. He's eaten through the miles, and he's decided he's announced that he is moving to Harlem. New York City. Now, this is where people who can't afford a New York City move. We've seen this with Gino. Gino moved to Harlem, five roommates. It's the cheapest place on the island of Manhattan that you could live. Harlem. Of course. Now, Dave Landau is moving to Harlem. He's announced this. What does this mean? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it means Dave Landau is leaving behind his wife and child no, 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 to no, join no, no, no. Compound Network. Now, why do I believe no. this? Why no do way. I believe this and why do I clap with such glee? Oh, why fuck. am I excited that a man is leaving his kid behind? Well, he's either leaving his wife and kid behind for the count. So think about that. That's a despicable, terrible thing to do. Imagine if you go, uh, hey, son, where's your dad? He left me. Oh, what did he leave you for? Surely something really important. Oh, no. Uh, it's for this guy who does backyard karaoke in a troubled <laughs> manner. And he he bit a woman. Uh, and they're making a documentary called The Demented Truth about Anthony Cumia. And they're just on part one. Uh, yes. this is, uh, it happens on Reddit. So that's a terrible story for a child to tell. And certainly we want no kid to have to tell that story to their teacher. The other option is he is moving his wife and kid into an apartment in East 
Harlem, which is child abuse. Uh, Dave Landau is making 200 a week doing the Kumia show. Am I to believe that he is subjecting his white son from Novi, Michigan? He's going to pick up, okay, you got to leave all your friends and and go into a public school in Harlem? Holy That's shit. your new life? I hope you know how to dribble because it's your only hope against these basketball kids because you're fucking through. Uh, I mean, East Harlem, I think, has the most dangerous public school. This is like, when you think of, like, dangerous minds, that's like that. Where, like, you oh, go yeah, into school quite and the all investment. the kids are just smoking blunts and listening to boom boxes, And the teacher's are like, objection! Uh, silence! Order! And they're like, fuck you! How do I reach these kids? He's not at that 200 a week. A private school in New York is, like as much as college it's like 80 grand a year to send your kid to any sort of private school in new york so we know he's not doing that well he's making all that kumia cash so i believe and if somebody could verify this dave landau just for a co-host gig on the count is leaving his child dude he's not out his son. What, what, what makes you say he's leaving the child he's moving them over you think that he's going to move him into his apartment in harlem how would you leave your child behind for the prospect of doing the Kumia show for years and years? I don't think you're understanding what Harlem looks like. No, you I do don't. understand what it looks like. Nobody, no me. family. His whole family is there. What do you think? The grandparents? Everybody, you're going to move your kid into Spanish Harlem? Now, I... Uh, but how are you going to leave behind your kid, though? Because it's better for the kid to leave him in Novi, yeah. Michigan than to take him to Harlem. What's the kid going to do in Harlem? Yeah, but yeah, I He'll guess. be killed. <laughs> Is it that bad? Yes, it's like you don't go to jail and you're like, well, my wife and kids need to come with me. They're coming with me to live in my it's cell. that bad. Yes. Okay. It's, it's, living it's, it's, in Harlem like is one step above living in jail. So <laughs> if he, in fact, is bringing his wife and kid to Harlem, That's that is worse. equally as bad as leaving the kid behind. In fact, I would say for the kids, for the kid, it's worse to, to bring him with. Probably, right. So yeah. either way he cuts it, he's destroyed that kid's uh, life just so that he could work with the count. That's the kind of guy we're dealing with. This is the kind of Beastie Boys fan we're dealing with here. Yeah, well, we know he's not a very great guy. And we know he doesn't really know any songs by the Beastie Boys besides Intergalactic Planetary. <laughs> and that's what he calls it. Yes. Uh, Harlem is the last place you want to live in New York, Sven, yeah. Sven course, believes yeah. in family values. Chicago is worse. I mean, <laughs> well, some parts maybe. That's coming from no. a redneck. Listen, I live in paradise. I don't know. We don't have any. Well, you could eat off the fucking street. It's so clean. It's beautiful. I should do. Yeah. A, I should do a Mike's David from my uh, town. You should do a little thing. I don't even know what your town looks like. Me I would I love to little, see uh, something like that. Please, I'll, I'll show you guys my neighborhood on Instagram. You guys won't believe it. It's perfect. No, thanks. I'd like a video. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's go saying. back to this post here because we were going to talk about Gino, right? Okay. Yes. So then we find out that Gino is moving. And we've got a really interesting clip here. Okay, from now the, the plot thickens. Yeah, the, the plot thickens. We've got a really interesting clip. Now, remember, Gino Bisconti, flat broke Gino, dead as dirt, poor as dirt Gino. He lived in East Harlem across the street from a housing project. He had five roommates. They were each paying 200 a month to I live in this dilapidated artist's community filled with 58-year-old losers. He goes on the Michael Malice show, and he says this. Can you see this one, Sven? I can. Okay, hold on. Let me blow this up. Let me blow this up. Now, he's on Michael Malice's disturbingly freaky-deaky show, <laughs> You're Welcome. I don't Which know. Which is now on Gas Digital. Yeah. Run by my friend, Louis J. Gilman. So look at Michael Mar Malice's suit. It is so fucking thrilling. Okay, and they're talking. <laughs> so let's see what they're talking about. Let's listen to this. This is Macy's. Ah, oh, dude, that's how you roll, dude. I got this. I don't. I don't even know. I'm a homeless person, dude. I can't wait. I'm about to move again. I just saw everything in the street when I can fit. Move. My I'm about to move again. It's not cute anymore. Blah by blah the way. blah. I'm about to move again, and then the very interesting. Michael Malice picks up on this, and he actually asks him this. Street, what I can fit Oof, move. On where, move where from and where to? Well, I'm. I'm I don't know. We don't know. No, where, where do you live now? Uh, East Harlem. Okay. 
Michael Malice goes, where are you moving from and where to? And he goes, I, 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 I don't know. We, you don't know we. where you're moving? You're moving, but you don't know where you're moving. Interesting. Yeah, he's not allowed to announce this yet. So listen to this. It gets screwier. I'm, I'm, I don't know. We don't know. No, where, where do you live now? Uh, East Harlem. Do you really? Okay. But we're moving out. I don't know. But that's the thing. But we're we. moving out. Uh, okay. So he goes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. East Harlem. But we are moving out. And then Michael Malice, which is something that most people wouldn't do. He goes, who's we? Cool. Who's, who's we? Okay. But we're moving out. I don't know. But that's the thing. It's who's like, we? Uh, we is me and this little thing I call my drinking problem. Hold on. Wow. Uh, no, not again. Sip and goes that. like this. And it's like. Uh, you are too embarrassed to say your roommates. And he's actually too embarrassed to finish up this story. Like, he's screwed up. He's let this out of the bag. We're moving. We don't know where we're moving to. Who's we? Uh, uh, me and my drinking problem. Great use of the fool's sip. Yeah. And then he takes he a got out of giant <laughs> fool's sip. So let's watch that again. Uh, we is me and this little thing I call my drinking problem. Hold on. <laughs> Oh, you know it's better than alcohol. You said it earlier, segregation. It you was like a that. great full sip. Yeah. I want to hear that again, on, please. Oh, you know it's no, better I got than it, alcohol. Please. You said it I want to see the whole thing again, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. No problem. We is me and this little thing I call my drinking problem. Hold on. Oh, you know it's better than alcohol. You said it earlier, segregation. Like alcohol. Um, segregation means they're still. Shut up! Trying to change. Ooh. Bumbling idiot, but wait, it gets worse. Listen to this. Well, here, what the fuck are you talking about? What's this moderate shit? Or F A S T quick. Look, uh, I'm moving at the end of the month, and then it's like you start over. I'm gonna move, and then I'm gonna find another place. I love it. Like I, I'm gonna move, and then I'm gonna find another place. I love it. I love it. Yeah, so he's not insecure about this at all. What he's saying is, he's moving, aka he has to leave where he lives now, and then he's gonna find another place. So what has happened here? Is Gino being kicked out? Has is Gino not able to afford the two hundred dollars a month rent? Listen to this one more time. It's moderate shit. Or F A S T quick. Look, uh, I'm moving at the end of the month, and then it's like you start over. I'm gonna move, and then we'll find another place. I love it. Like I feel when I accumulate too much stuff, time to move. You know what, Mike? Like, what's what do the you most think? annoying? Since yeah. we are starting travel, right, 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 what's sorry. the most annoying thing about working? Say this. Parent? Say this. Say this again. You think they might have been squatting a building? I don't know what's going on, but this story is full of holes. And it's usually when there's when you're squatting a building and then there's a new purpose found for said building. Then exactly. The inhabitants have to move. He so doesn't know be. he's moving and then he's going to find a new place. Listen to this. Uh, I'm moving at the end of the month and then it's like you start over. I'm going to move and then I'm going to find another place. I love it. Like I feel when I accumulate too much stuff. Time to move, and then you just leave it. What's the most annoying, since we are starting drama, what's the most annoying thing about working with Aaron? Okay, and that's it for the clip. Yikes. So, and then he starts rambling. I feel like when you accumulate too much stuff, you got to move. No, 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 you own nothing. We've seen videos of your room. It's barren. You've got yeah, three stuffed animals. Yeah, decision you made. You've this got a uh, hand-drawn picture of a sailboat that one of your uh, who-gives-a-shit nieces drew for you. He has his little teddy bear. Hanging on to this idea that he has a niece as if he has a family. No, no, no. <laughs> You've got a niece that you see once every six months. It's not you your family. You're drinking, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we. Uh, you don't got to bring it up like a fucking... No, I do. I keep. I will keep doing it. When I'm drinking with friends, they don't stop in the middle and go. So, should we drink more? What do you think? Just fucking no, drink, bro. No. Well, I finished. That's so what much. you would say to me. By the way, I learned talking to somebody from like that from you. No. Oh. Well, That's yeah. How you would so talk. I, I would never actually talk to you the way I just did. I was imitating how you <laughs> treat others. No, 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 no. That's I was why just you're reminding smiling. You that oh, you have then, a nice, perfectly fine bottle of alcohol there. That you should. Take advantage of Let's do this. This is a new segment on the show called Drink, 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 Drink. Come on, everybody, drink, 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 drink. But it's spicy. Wait one second. Wait, let me do that again, Mike. Look. Yeah. Oh, God. He's putting up the Gino devil horns. Oh, God. So this gets a little creepier uh, with the Gino stuff. Yeah, so he's being evicted. He was squatting a shitty apartment, and they're being kicked it out. It appears so. 
Uh, now, we also have uh, another clip of him disrespecting me. Would you like to hear this? Yes, please. So he's still bringing me up here. And I don't like being disrespected. I don't take well to it. I trash my You're house. You're a very sensitive boy. Uh, like the other day, I threw away all of Jules' makeup because I was upset. <laughs> so I just broke all her lipsticks in half and I go, ah, clean it up. <laughs> What a shitty thing to do. I actually did that to an ex-ex-girlfriend once. I was so mad at her that I took her open purse and I whipped it across the room so bad. And it, it, all her stuff went everywhere. And then, like, we finished the argument, but it was with her on her hands and knees, like, cleaning up makeup. And I was like, you're pathetic. Look at you. Clean it up. You're an abusive husband. Well, you got to be abusive to people that are shitty. You're right. Uh, now, here is Gino um, on Michael Malice's episode again. It's another clip. Let's see what he says. I almost forgot what he says here. But the people that hate me. Oh, he's going to talk about the people who hate him but and the why they're wrong, him. okay? Yeah. Very confident man. But the people who hate me. Because everyone knows. So Gino has to explain this to everyone he meets. So he's with Michael Malice and he's like, Gino, every time, you know, you get a lot of hate, you know from people so what's that all about so he always feels he needs to explain it even when not asked here he is uh looking like a complete piece of crap uh let's hear him talk about me here but the people that hate me are from that awful podcast that we had it for like a week or a month and, and oh is that where it comes from that's where it comes from and i was dumb enough when it first started to engage to engage and then you realize like oh and i have nothing but respect for that guy in terms me. of oh. his business model is this let's just make fun of every podcast that's bigger than us and don't get me wrong they go as high as joe rogan hoping people will engage back and fight and and then after i'm like all right i'm done with it Wow. But the people that wow. You hear that one? He's done with it. He's figured out how yeah. to conquer this. Uh, and uh, in his head, he's come up with this nice comforting excuse that the only reason we go after Gino, the only reason we make fun of him is we just want to steal his listenership. Of course, that's all it is. You know, In Hot Water, I think, is one of the only shows where you never see, oh, I was an In Hot Water fan. I came over to rep. You see this with everyone. You see... Oh, I used to listen to Anna Lowe, then Mike attacked them. Now I'm a, a Red Bar guy. Oh, I heard about you from uh, Kumia I used to listen, or I heard about you from Gavin. And we see those people all yeah. the time. Everyone sees them all the time. Have you ever heard anybody come over from In <laughs> Hot Water? You know, no. it's because it's not because we haven't been able to crack that one. There are no In Hot Water people. That's what no. it is. There's not enough of them for there to be a percentage that comes over. So it yeah. wouldn't work. I uh, don't think we've covered in hot water in six months. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit anymore. And also, by the way, when do you think he's going to decide that this washed up personality of him isn't cute anymore? Well, when it he's starts... like f 56 years old, it's not cute anymore to be an well, alcoholic. All piece we of have shit. to do is wait. You asked when he's going to stop uh, when those hospital bills start rolling in, when he needs a liver <laughs> transplant, but there's no one there to give him one. You know, when, yeah. when he's attached to the oxygen machine because he's such a low life. You know, being 50 years old, a guy it's like Gino cute. chugging a bottle of Jameson every day, we're going to be around for that health demise. You know, that's coming up soon. Same with Kumia. Yeah. You don't think Kumia is going to have a heart attack and fall into the pool holding a microphone? <laughs> it's happening, <laughs> you know? And people are going to be like, is he kidding? And then after the electricity starts dissipating they'll pull his fried body from his pool oh you have goosebumps yeah somebody will say Ooh, goosebumps remember Ooh, when Kumia oh, used yeah. to rub women's arms and go mm. <laughs> goosebumps and then cut one off with his little knife and eat it <laughs> he plans those um so those are the gino updates uh everybody his theme song yeah. one more time you want to hear that yes please. all right there it is it's not working. Okay. Well, I love that Gino theme song. That's from a friend of his uh, cool. or, uh, who wrote that. Or it's from a friend of mine, actually, who oh, wrote that. that makes Gino more sense. Uh, reacts to Mike. Gino disgusting pick. What's this one? We got one more. Gino disgusting pick. Oh, it's Let's a see. great pick of his apartment. Oh, it's yeah. It's a picture house. of his apartment before. This is uh, him and his roommates. So oh. he's got a hobo. 
He's got this girl, and you can see, look at his apartment. They have one window, and it's got like a uh, uh, metal fence uh, or a metal uh, grate. grate over it because he probably lives uh, where they, they can get in if you leave an open window. <laughs> yes. So look Very at that in his live. apartment, in the living room. He's got uh, on his window like a really cheap, you know how like the outside of a store would be on ground level where it has that gate that you pull over the storefront to keep the riffraff out. He's got that over his window. No joke, like one of those sliding cheap <laughs> yes. rusted up gates that pull out. So that's how they have to keep themselves safe where they live. Imagine that you can't even look out the window. You have to hang your cigarette out of one of the diamond holes in the, of the gate. <laughs> So that the smoke doesn't fill up your 10 by 10 living room. So this is just like a single apartment that they all have one room in or something like that? I, I couldn't believe... even... I've never had a roommate in my life, no. so I don't know this how it works. This is one of those apartments that has about four bedrooms, and they're each about five by five. Yeah. Where all you could fit is a twin-size bed in there and maybe a little cabinet to keep your clothes. Okay. And then they um, share the bathroom and the they living share room. one bathroom for five guys. So yeah, remember Pretty Gino cool. has to wait in line to shit in the morning. That's, That's one so of those funny. things. Like he wears his bathrobe, he's burping, and they all wait in line on their old Costco Samsung phones. He's cracking jokes. Scrolling that likes through. Him. You know, you could tell Gino's poor because every screenshot of Twitter is like written in Comic Sans font and it's got like a <laughs> blue, navy blue background. And you're like, what the fuck operating system is he using? <laughs> this is like a free phone from Sam's Club. Uh, so there he is. And he's got a roommate in there. I've never seen such a hobo. The guy's yeah. like 60 years old. He looks like uh, Jerry Garcia from the Grateful you th Dead. And you think they're all comics too? No, each one of them has a different lie that they live. One like, of them is a Halloween witch. Yeah, one of them paints people in Central Park, you know, who never asked. Oh my God. One of them That's is so a depressing. unicyclist, you know. For, <laughs> they're all like street performers working for oh. tips out of a guitar case. That's a hellish life. Yeah. It's a nightmare life. So uh, I believe, though, there is some breaking news. I think they're giving in hot water another day a week on Cal Oh, cool. Good news. So Gino is going to be rich. Maybe that's why he's moving. He can now afford a $300 a month place. But now your theory was that him and Landau might be moving in together. No. No. Uh, I think just the theory is that Landau is moving to Harlem because Harlem is the cheapest place in New York City. Okay. You know, and most people won't move there. So if you're willing to live like Gino lives, yeah, you're going to get away with a great price. <laughs> most people wouldn't be willing to live in the projects, you know, to give away their whole life like that. Fly broke. Gino ain't got no money. Fly broke. Always looking so damn crummy. Black Pro Chino! Ain't nobody think he's funny. <laughs> <laughs> he can't move out of the project.